Okay, I think we're going back live here. It says the meeting is now live on Facebook. I think we are back. I see it now. We're we're back. All right. <laughs> so, all right. Time this, to time. There this, we go. This round two, and we're going to be talking about leading strong in times of adversity. I want to introduce you formally to Darren. Um, in the previous video that just dropped a minute ago, I was saying how much we are aligned in our efforts to help business owners and their teams really work from strengths and create great places to work in doing so. Darren Virasamy is a TEDx speaker and co-founder and chief operating officer of 34 Strong comprised of a team that believes everyone deserves a great place to work and that any workplace can be great. A leading expert in the global employee engagement community, the 34 Strong team leverages the strengths-based approach to human development to create massive shifts within organizations, both culturally and on the bottom line. He and his team have created sustainable change in small micro-businesses all the way up to large organizational teams at the FDA, Bank of America, and the California Department of Health. And some of those businesses that Darren and his team have created sustainable change in include the Tap the Potential team and Steve Bousquet's business, American Landscape and Lawn Science, amongst others in the Tap the Potential family. And we all had the privilege of working last year very closely with Darren. And this year, we're going to have that opportunity again. So I'm really excited to have you here with our Facebook community, Darren, and introduce you as we talk about leading strong in times of adversity. I am so happy to be here, uh, Dr. Sabrina. It's always uh, it's always fun to spend time with you. Uh, and, and boy, we had some uh, adverse technical conditions this morning or this <laughs> afternoon, actually, timing wise for you here, right going through. But we made it. We're gonna we're gonna work through it. So we we did. So Darren, as we we talk about leading strong in times of adversity, what are you noticing are some key ingredients that leaders are utilizing that's helping them to be resilient right now? There's a great concept of this term called certainty anchor. So it, you might have heard of uh, Jonathan Fields, that he's the podcaster on the Good Life Project, right? So he, he runs a show, the Good Life Project uh, podcast. It's an incredible show, but he wrote a book I think it was back in 2010 or 2011 when we were going through a, you know, the big economic downturn. I think it was in 2009, 2010. And it was called Uncertainty, Using Times of Uncertainty as Fuel for Brilliance. When we're in times of uncertainty and challenges and so many unknowns coming at us and adversity as well, right? I, I, I know they're different, adversity and uncertainty, but we've gone through a lot of uncertainty that has made us feel uh, very adverse in, in, in the experiences that we're having. But he talked about the importance of finding certainty anchors in times of uncertainty. The reason for this, and I'll explain what that concept is, Dr. Sabrina, the reason this is so important though, is simply because when we have so much coming at us that's unknown, that we're unaware of, how do we deal with it? What starts to happen with our brain? We are what we focus on, right? So when we're seeing nothing but uncertainty, I don't know this, I don't know that, guess what starts to shift in our mind? Everything becomes, I don't know, I'm unaware, not sure how to deal with this. And then it can atrophy the fact that there is still lots of certainty for us to anchor to, to grab onto. So certainty anchor is something as simple as looking out of your window and asking yourself, am I confident that the sun is not going to fall out of the sky in the next two minutes, right? Mm. Am I confident that right now I'm seated here, the ground beneath me is not gonna fall away? Am I confident that when I go to the door in my office that the handle's gonna turn? These might seem like really simple, minuscule things. And there's a reason we go back to such basic premises of what are we certain about? Because we're swimming in a sea of uncertainty and there's so much of it around us, we can easily start losing sight of the fact that even though there is this wall of uncertainty that's coming at us. There's still lots of things that are very solid and mm -hmm. we want to make sure we're conditioning those muscles to be able to see that and see the, the, those areas. I like to use this example for, for, for people that are rock climbers, right? I'm not a rock climber. I'm, I'm no expert at it. I live in California, but we, we have the half dome side and people go through and they're free climbing and they're, they're going through this. When somebody's climbing what looks to be impossible, 
it looks like there's no way you can climb a flat face of a wall. What do you have to do? You have to actually create anchors in which you can kind of pull yourself up. If you just look at the wall and you say, I'm gonna climb that, that can be daunting. So finding those anchors on the wall or creating them is critical. And even amidst everything that's coming at us right now that we've all been through as business owners and are going to go through and are going through, it's critical to make sure that that muscle doesn't atrophy. I think Oprah Winfrey said it best. Uh, she said, the more wins that we have, the, the more wins that we, we celebrate, I'm gonna paraphrase her, the more wins that there are to celebrate, right? And those little anchors, sometimes those can be the little wins and that's how we can build more certainty back into our businesses and in our own lives as entrepreneurs. I love that. At Tap the Potential, when we start any group meeting with our business owners or any internal meeting, we start with focusing on wins and successes because what we focus on grows. And you said it, that we have to really condition our muscles to focus on what is certain and what are the wins. And when we start looking at all these things that are uncertain and unclear, and we really focus on that, it takes our attention away from where we are strong and our wins point to where we are strong. And when we look at, well, we're having wins here, there's a sign that there's underlying strengths, right? So true. Yep. It, it, that's so true. And it's so critical. And here's the thing that I really want to drive home with business owners. Look at things outside of your business. Because if you're looking for it in your business and you're feeling all the pressures and that feels completely uncertain, well, you're, let's look in the places that you can actually see it. I get, that's why I said there's, nature offers great, uh, great lessons going through. I think you and I are pretty certain that any birds that are flying around are not magically going to just start speaking to us in perfect English, right? Like <laughs> that are outside, you're going to sure. walk, out, walk out to a tree and it's going to be like, okay, Dr. Sabrina, let me, let, me, let me tell you all of these things on how to change everything. You know, there's certain pieces that we can be certain of and looking to our strengths in other areas is critical. You can kind of see hanging out behind me. There's, there's a base for those of you that don't know, I'm a musician. What's one of the things I've been doing a lot of to counterbalance all of the uncertainty and still build the certainty muscle. I've still been making sure that I've been making time to play music. And here's the interesting thing. It's easy for us as entrepreneurs, as business owners to say, I don't have time for that. Well, guess what? Those can be the little things that give you the spark of certainty and creative energy in our mind that just shift that thinking. We need to be creative in our problem solving in, in working through whatever the storm is right now and going forward. So finding those little pieces in other areas that give you energy is so critical. The winds is, the winds is huge in our business. I do encourage you to look to little anchor points in your life right now and in the past that have made you feel energized. I can still go back regardless of what happens in the world of business. I can go back and I can say, you know what? I can, I, I can still hold my own on a base. Like mm -hmm. I can still do that. That gives me energy when I'm stepping into whatever the day is gonna bring at me to, uh, to still be able to tackle that. And a big part of that practice that I've seen successful, I practice this myself, but I've seen many other leaders that are working through this has been making sure that that energy and that bank account is full before you jump into the day. So yeah. before I look at my phone, before I jump into what's the fire of the day, I make sure there's water on the fire truck. Yeah, before absolutely. You the fire and you're like, oh, wow, I have all these things I have to fight. Okay, there's nothing in there. We've got big problems, right? Like that's right. not gonna work out well. So what are the things that you can do to energize up here to step into the unknowns? It's, it's, it's not gonna solve everything. It's not gonna be easy, but at least you're confident when you step in there that you, mm -hmm. you've got some water on the fire truck, but you yeah. need to at least do that. At Tap the Potential, we call that veggies first. So doing the things yes. that make us strong first and those take priority and we do it in two ways. So we, we talk about doing it for ourselves in terms of those energy gainers, the things that give us energy, um, like for me, it's meditation, it's going for a walk, it's taking time to read. I also like to knit. Sometimes I get to do that at the start of my day. Um, those things fill me up and make me strong, but everyone is a little different. Every one of us has a, a different thing, that energy gainer. Um, you and I, as we were working through our troubleshooting and technical difficulties, you were telling me about your weekend and getting to spend time hiking and with family in the forest. And that really 
energized you coming into, into the week ahead. Um, and so we do it on the personal side, looking at our veggies first. We also do it on the business side, looking at what needs to happen to make the business stronger today. And I think that's such a, a key part of why you and I are talking, because when we work on our teams and we work on developing our teams, that is one of those big veggies that makes us so much stronger. Um, I know I'm very grateful for the work that we got to do with you last year with our team because going into what we've dealt with with coronavirus and the, all the different events over the last few months, we have really had to tap into the strengths of each team member to get through this because there has been a lot that, we, that we've had coming at us on the Tap the Potential team as we've tried to support different business owners with their challenges. And every week in our one-to-ones with our team, we have a discussion around on a scale of one to 10, did you work, how well did you work from your strengths this week? And I'm tuning into what our team members are saying because when they're giving a lower rating, that's a, a red flag to me that if that person stays in that low rating for a very long time, more than a few weeks, they're not working from their strengths. And strengths energize us. And I believe that ability to work from our strengths is key during times of uncertainty and adversity that we are able to pull on that and that we even have that awareness. And, and that I is a big piece of this is developing the awareness of what are our strengths. In my experience, my strengths are so much a part of who I am. I don't even notice them. I take them for granted. It's that outside feedback of, hey, Sabrina, you do this. Did you know that makes you different from other people? And you and I had a lot of conversations about that last year and light bulbs were just going off in my head. And these were all things that I just do naturally and I was taking them for granted and it never occurred to me, I could leverage those things. And then I got excited because I was hearing my team members come back from their meetings with you and they were talking about the same thing. They were like, I just do these things naturally and Darren pointed them out to me and now I can be a lot more intentional around them. So I'm curious, Darren, as, as you have lots of conversations with leaders, what, what are you seeing from that when, when we really hone in on our strengths, what starts to happen? When we really hone in on our strengths, number one, to your point, it's a dive into the self-awareness mirror. The one thing that all great leaders have in common, and I mean that wholeheartedly, great leaders, is not the fact that they're all visionaries, they're all great at connecting with people, uh, they're all, they, they all um, are able to um, execute, get a lot of things done. The one thing that's common, right, because we look to different leaders that we've had in our own lives, and we might say, oh, they all did things differently, but they got a great result. They were self-aware. They were self-aware, Dr. Sabrina, knowing who they are and who they're not. For us as entrepreneurs, it is so critical for that to take place. Not only is it a function of how we're gonna show up and how we're gonna play in, 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 on our teams, to your point, a lot of times, the things that we take for granted, it's actually far deeper than that. It costs your business money and here's why. Because we undervalue it in the marketplace. It's no big deal. That's, that's really not that big of a deal. So we actually play down the value of what we're actually giving and the value of our services because in our mind, we see it as no big deal because what do we tell ourselves? Anybody can do it. I can do it. Anybody can do it. And the truth of the matter is, well, if anybody could do it, why is everybody coming to you and asking you this? And it takes you 20 minutes to do this, whatever your service is, whatever it is that you provide, whatever your unique gift is, and it takes hours and hours for others to do. It's or, not if, or if they even can do it, right? Exactly. exactly. That's the whole point. Or if they can even do it, right? So those areas here, I, I encourage people to think of, number one, what energizes you and what exhausts you in your business? What energizes you? What exhausts you in your business? When we're playing to our strengths, everybody, it's not only a function of doing more of the things that we do really well, it's actually owning the things that we don't do well. So to play to your strengths, you got to own your weaknesses. What are the things you don't do well that you really need a hand in making those connections with on the team? In 34 Strong, I give you an example, our chief of staff 
Erin Harrison. She's incredible at really keeping, being the glue that holds our team together and going through all of those pieces. I know those elements are critical. They are huge. I want to get back and serve that. But if that was my primary role, I would easily get focused on, well, we need to get this done. We need to get these pieces completed. What's the next level of the vision going through and might not intentionally check as much on the people side, even though it means a lot to me, I, it might take more work for me to do that as effectively as she can do it. And her strengths tell that, and she's always been that way uh, with, with being able to go through that. So it's not a function. I want to be very clear. It's not a function of you don't value the things that are in your, your areas of weakness that may, maybe you don't go through, but you just don't show up as strong as that. You might see people that are really able to keep the team connected or are able to slow the team down and say, hey, let's think about this a little bit more. I want to throw some questions at us. Just make sure that we're looking at this on the whole, whole level. How can we step more into that? There's a great African proverb that I've said many times before, and it's simply this. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with others. We think of bridges, the Golden Gate Bridge out in San Francisco. It's recently been in the news and because they, they retrofitted it and there's these metal tubes that they put in the sidewalk. And now it's the largest instrument on the planet, okay? Because the wind blows and it's just loud. It's basically like a loud wind tunnel, like tuning fork. It's kind of crazy, right? So that's not the actual story that I wanted to tell you, but people have heard a lot about it <laughs> because it's fascinating, right? When we think of the Golden Gate Bridge and many other suspension bridges, there's two towers that are right there, right? For those of you that have seen it or have been on it. And when we think about it, there's those cables, Dr. Sabrina, that pull. And those cables pull in different directions. But because there's tension between those cables, that gives rise to the strength of the whole bridge. And supposedly, these new tubes also give rise to it. They're just incredibly loud, right? The whole point here is sometimes... And oftentimes the fact that others are coming at things from a very different lens on our teams are actually outstanding because it helps to push up and give rise to the strength of the team, the organization, and the idea that we're all working towards. When we can give ourselves permission to play to our strengths, we're gonna ask for the differing perspective of others because our differences actually are one of our greatest advantages. Yes. And, you know, one of the things that I've seen that's really amazing to me over the last year is our business owners and teams who've gone through the Leading Your Organization from Strengths course that we're going to be talking about. We're going to be offering that again. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. But those business owners and their teams have been very intentional around letting go of things that are outside their zones of genius the things that create drag and grind for us. And I know for myself, it's created a lot of energy in this past year. And I felt like I have a lot more free time as I'm getting a heck of a lot more done. I really feel like I'm about three to four times more productive this year than I was last year. And I'm working fewer hours, taking more time off, and we're accomplishing more. And I see that with our team members as well. And I've heard other business owners who went through the Leading Your Organization from Strengths speak to this phenomenon too. I know I've been in our Better Business, Better Life program group meetings, and I've heard these business owners confronting each other on different things that they are struggling through. And someone else will say, could someone else on your team do that for you? And the light bulb goes off like, yes, this is not my, my genius. I should let it go. I find someone else on the team. And then the next week, someone else is doing it. And their mental, it's the freeing up of the mental space that feels so good that comes out of this. So true. And you, you can speak to this better than I can. We've discussed this in the past, but decision-making fatigue is a real thing. That's why many, many successful people have the exact same wardrobe, right? They wear the same thing. Steve Jobs was notorious. He basically had an outfit, a uniform that he wore. Mm -hmm. It took away from decisions that he had to make. He wasn't wasting it on the small things. He was saving that space for the big picture stuff that he needed to focus on. What are those pieces for you? And when we're occupying that mental capacity, yeah, we're contributing, but are we actually moving the needle in a way that, that matters? This is like pumpkin planning your business 
on the team side. So we're all familiar with pumpkin planning, but we're really looking at it through what are the, what are the pumpkins in people's performance and thinking of how we can supercharge that in each person so that we can not grow just the greatest giant pumpkin, but the greatest giant pumpkin field that can serve many others. That's, yeah. that's why I've looked at it. Since you brought up pumpkin planting, I want to tie this in how we utilize 34 Strong and the strengths-based work that you've done with us in terms of our own pumpkin planting and for our clients. So when we're pumpkin planting, we're looking at what is the business sweet spot. And we have our clients doing wish list interviews with their top clients and customers. And in those wish list interviews, we on the Tap the Potential team are able to see the strengths of that business through the lens of the, the top clients. And the business owner is just hearing, of course, we do these things all the time. What's the big deal? No big deal. And we're able to point out and say, this, this is a big deal. This is what makes you unique. And when there's multiple team members involved, once we identify that sweet spot, our next task is to systematize the business around the sweet spot and get every role in the business serving the sweet spot. And that is where it becomes so helpful for to know the strengths of the team members around the sweet spot and, and as they relate to their role in serving the sweet spot. And that is when a business really hums because mm -hmm. you have clear strengths for the business, you have clear roles, People in the roles are aligning with their strengths to serve the sweet spot. And it is a beautiful thing. And that, in my experience, is how we create a great place to work. There's a real reason for existing. The business is doing something very purposeful and very meaningful to its top clients. Team members feel that and they get to work from their strengths to deliver that. So true. And, and I, I got to give a shout out to, to Steve Bousquet as part of that, mm -hmm. because Creating a great place to work is not going to be just attending a workshop that we're doing. We will give you some of the tools, but the work that Steve has done after the fact, mm -hmm. that's what makes it stick. You'd, creating a great place to work, we always say this, was 34 Strong Do we create great places to work. The real work that we do is we're just a tour guide. You create the great place to work. We help give you the tools. We'll challenge you with questions, help reframe the thinking and help, help get that started. But we're not the ones that are actually changing that right? It's yeah. actually people that are going through because workplace culture is kind of like the tides of the sea. They go up and down on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, what happens? Let's see, we get adversity, we get uncertainty, we get all sorts of things that are coming at us, right? That we've got to deal with internally within our business and externally. This year has been, you could have had the best laid plans internally within your business and externally, the world just keeps coming at us in so many different levels. And we've still got to focus on those areas of, of, of strength and how do we anchor to that? The fascinating part, one of the things that we, we talk about, like playing to your strengths is huge. Creating a great place to work, what is that? It's actually creating a culture of engagement where people are engaged and valued for being valuable. I know Steve, that's been a big part of the connection that he's made. And that's a big part of what we talk about in our workshop that we've done. But engagement is something that we have to continue to invest in. Right now, with all the challenges that businesses have faced, are facing, and will face, um, one of the things that we have to be mindful of is, you know, we always say it, it's easy to say, hey, our people are our greatest asset, all of these different areas, but we have to actually make the connections with our people right now. If there's ever a time for compassion and building trust and engagement in your team, oh, it's now, because people are gonna either get out of this and say, remember when we went through all these times and I remember you stuck by me and you really just took the time to understand where I was at or can you remember how you treated me? You know, I, there's, um, my, you probably heard this, this quote, uh, I think it's from Maya Angelou. People will, 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 will not always remember what you say, they'll not always remember what you did, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. If there's a time to make sure that your people are feeling valued and you're just aware of where they're at, it's now. And, and the engagement pieces are huge.
It is. It is such a huge piece because people are very distracted right now. It's, you know, we have a lot of people working from home. I was just watching another Zoom call where someone was referencing their unruly colleague, which was the toddler who was you know, distracting yeah. them while they were on the Zoom call. And so our, our team members have all these distractions pulling them away from engaging. And yet, if we are being intentional with creating a culture of engagement and showing that we care about our team members, we want to know who they are as, as people. We want to know what their dreams and goals are, and we want to align them in their roles to succeed working from their strengths. That's where we're going to get that engagement, that pulls the attention back and keeps people coming back to the team. I, I've heard on the Tap the Potential team repeatedly different team members say, this is my family. This, it, You guys have stood by me. I feel strong when we come together. I like our team huddles and our team meetings because it energizes. That's what we all want to be out there creating for our team members during times of uncertainty. So I, I want to talk a little bit here about our upcoming offering, Darren, because we are we're going to be teaching the leading your organization from strengths. You're, you've graciously agreed to come back and teach that again. Um, the first session is going to start July 30th, and we have some important deadlines coming up. There's a webinar that you've created that is an introduction to leading your organization from strengths. Can you speak a little bit about what you've covered in that webinar and what people can expect? Yeah, I've got just, I've got some general notes here, but a big part of what we're going to get into in leading your organization from strengths is, you know, we've talked a little bit about here about what the case for strengths is, why playing to our talents is huge. And it, it started with this question that was asked by Dr. Donald Clifton from who's developed the Clifton Strengths Assessment. It was simply this, what will happen when we focus on what's right with people instead of fixating on what's wrong with them? That's the question, that's the shift. And our human nature is to do what, Dr. Sabrina, oftentimes focus on what's wrong, what's broken, where are my weaknesses? And we think that's our greatest opportunity for growth and development. It's not, it actually de-energizes us significantly and holds us back. So we're gonna talk about that and make that connection as well to what, uh, what, what it actually means to connect with employee engagement. There's four needs of followers. Those four needs, as identified in the book, Strengths-Based Leadership, are trust, compassion, stability, and hope. Part of what we will be touching on is what are those specifically and why they're needs of followers. And, and we'll be able to, to tackle a little bit as well. Like, How does that tie in, not only in leading when times are quote unquote normal, I don't even know what that looks like anymore. That boat sailed you know, so long ago, but right now and going through how the, it's so critical to bring us back together and how that creates engagement. We're really gonna get in to not only uh, talking about those pieces, but giving some tools for you right now and thinking of how can I better set expectations for people? Oftentimes, just that alone, right? It can be like we're playing a game of telephone. I'm, you know, Dr. Sabrina, you're, you're my leader. You're, you're telling me, hey, I need you to do this. I'm, I'm setting clear expectations, but Darren always falls flat. He never hits my expectations. And what it could be is that my learning style is different than yours or vice versa. A lot of times we will set expectations. We'll provide the way that we want things done. And we think, well, I've made it completely clear. I've had that conversation time and time again with leaders in large organizations and, uh, and, you know, and, and owners of small businesses that have teams. I, I set these clear expectations for my team. I don't understand why they don't get it. We teach and we provide uh, expectation setting through the lens of what? For me, that's how I would do it, right? So I'm setting yeah. expectations actually for the way I would do it. Haven't spent the time to actually learn how you would do it and what are the little shifts and cadence or the way that I present that idea or that work to meet your needs so that you can contribute. People mm -hmm. want to be valued for being valuable. They have contributions that they can make, but they have certain needs that are met. When we can unpack what those are. We can get into that. We're not going to get into all of that on the overview webinar, but we'll be talking around some of those pieces. And that's a big part of what's to come uh, starting on July 30th. And I, so really, really looking forward to that. Yes. Yeah, so to access this overview introduction to leading your organization from strengths, this is, I think it's a 15 minute webinar that gives a big overview of what we're covering and the importance of these different topics and how it's going to be relevant to you and your team members. You can go to tapthepotential.com 
forward slash strengths. That's tapthepotential.com forward slash strengths. We want you to watch the webinar first and we want you to share it with your team members too so that they can get excited. And we really, when you're choosing your team members that you may want to have participate with, you think about the people on your team who are the real go-getters, who you see who have leadership potential in them, the ones who are um, stepping up to the plate, who want to contribute, who are asking for more. And it, it's really an opportunity for them to acknowledge them for their contribution by inviting them to watch the webinar with you and possibly inviting them to join the course with you. Um, we do encourage you to have multiple, go through the course yourself and have multiple team members participating with you because that's really where you're going to get the greatest bang for your investment of time and money and energy in the course. Darren, what are, in thinking through from the people who participated last year, what are some characteristics that you saw that really help people get the most out of the leading your organization from strengths? They were invested uh, mentally, psychologically. They were having the conversation. So those that sent uh, teams together, not necessarily their full team, but their leadership teams together, mm -hmm. some of the dialogue we had was, let's start with the three or the four of you that are participating here. Here were some nuggets from what we had gone through in the session. And then the questions that I'd say, why don't you have some dialogue about this and how you work together? Because when that would start within your leadership pieces, guess what? It started to feel a little bit more comfortable. So you're not going from something like, well, I heard these questions, but I haven't had any practicum with it. It starts with how you see each other through a lens of strength. So having somebody else go through it with you actually gives a bit of practicum. That was where a lot of the shifts started. I, again, I can come back to, to, to Steve. I know he had a couple other team members that were going through, but that dialogue actually started between them because we have the workshops and then we have some work in between that you'll be doing. And some of that work in between could be connecting with each other. Some of it might be you having a one-to-one -one with somebody. And then, we, and then we, I think we have some coaching sessions that go on around that as well. Those will be with some of our 34 strong team members as well that, that handle some of the coaching yeah. aspects. So some one-to-one -one coaching, that one-to-one -one coaching is really valuable because that's someone sitting down with you like you did with me and looking at your report and looking at the interplay of strengths and what that can look like and how that makes us unique and very different. And, you know, just speaking to the, the team members participating, if I had just gone through the course by myself, I would have come out as the business owner with all these great ideas for how, you know, we can use this on our team. And I would be incredibly curious what my team member strengths are. And I could go have them take the Clifton strengths and find out their top five. But then what? What, what do I do with that? You know, so because I had my team members who'd gone through this and they'd had the one-on-one -on -one coaching themselves, when they were coming into our conversations, they were able to say, Dr. Sabrina, these are my strengths and these are how these two play together. And I saw them getting more and more curious to learn more about my strengths, their strengths, and really understand their full top 10 even and, and what that can look like. I, I have heard our clients who've had people in the Leading Your Organization from Strengths talk about ongoing learning that they and their teams have done. So it's not just, you know, here's four weeks that we're going to go through this together. It's really become something that they have grown. All of them have done a lot of self-development around over the past year. And on that note, I think something that's really, really important to note for everybody, it's not that here's the prescription you need to go through and check these boxes. We can get caught in that mindset. We go through some of the tools, we go through some of the techniques, but the reason for those coaching sessions is somebody might share similar talents with you, but here's a fascinating part, likelihood of somebody having their top 10 out of 34 in the exact same order as you in terms of their order of talents is one in 6 billion. So those results are almost as unique to you as your fingerprint, which is exactly why we talk you through these in the coaching because you might share the achiever theme, which is one of the most common uh, Clifton strengths, uh, talents, themes, as they're called, that people have, the way yours shows up versus mine are going to be completely different. And we're able to talk about that because we're going to say, well, achiever with maybe restorative versus achiever with maximizer. What does that look like? What are those nuances? And we can get into how does that show up in terms of how you show up and contributing. 
the piece that I want to talk about is when we look at this, we're going to give you and work with you to help you create your culture by intention and design. You are always going to have culture as an entrepreneur, right? And, and it's easy for us to say, oh, I don't have time for culture. I got to be working through that one more thing. I got to do that one more thing. That's usually a tell that we're, we're stuck on the hamster wheel, right? Like that we're not looking at things through the lens of strengths. That being said, culture can either be created by intention or design, which you'd be doing through this, or it can be created by accident, right? And right. you're going to have culture one way or the other. Do you want to be intentional in designing that? Or do you want it to just happen by accident? And the point being is what works for you. Like the question that you talked about, how weekly and one-to-ones you're doing, like how are you playing to your strengths? How how are they being used or how are you feeling? I, you know, scale of one to 10, how are you feeling in terms of utilization of strengths? That creates an opening. And guess what? That might not be what somebody else does with their organization, right? The way Steve's using it, the way others have, have, have used it, that's the beauty. It's folded in, yes. in a way that makes sense for your organization. Like I said, we're going to be your tour guide and help you get there and, mm-hmm. and get some of those elements about it. You get to build that on your own and we're going to help coach you through what worked, what didn't work to make that a reality. Yes. Yeah. So again, to get access to the introductory webinar for leading your organization from strengths, that's tapthepotential.com forward slash strengths. And we encourage you to watch the webinar with some of your, your top team members and really look at that as an opportunity to reward them for all of their engagement and participation that they've had. There's no greater honor, I believe, um, for A players than to be acknowledged for their contributions with further self development. Your, your A players just eat that stuff up. So it's it's a great opportunity to acknowledge that. Darren, I so appreciate you being here with us today and hanging with me through all these technical challenges as we sorted it all out and we made it happen today. We sure did. We sure did. It's always a pleasure getting to spend time with you. I'm fired up about what we have coming uh, for, for everybody in July. We, we need you as entrepreneurs. We need you as small business owners to to keep keep things going um, right now. So thank you for all the work that you know that you're doing, Dr. Sabrina, and that all of you as entrepreneurs, as business owners, are are doing, making a difference. Yes, absolutely. We want to make you entrepreneurs as strong as possible because you are going to be the leaders as the economy recovers, as we lead with love through difficult conversations around diversity. We we need to know how to be strong as leaders. And I really appreciate, Darren, that you're going to be a part of this and bringing the Tap the Potential family of business owners this opportunity with leading your organization from strengths again. So thank you again. It's good seeing you. Likewise, thank you.